Alrighty. As usual, another one's done. This is the STRV 103C by Trumpeter. It is a uh, not a tank destroyer, as some might recognize it from the game of uh, World of Tanks. It is actually the Swedish main battle tank, or was a Swedish main battle tank. Uh, they just chose to build one without a turret. Uh, the kit, kit wasn't bad. Uh, a lot of nice detail to it. Everything was really crisp. Uh, some of the smaller things had uh, misalignment on the molding, but that's not unusual. Uh, no real flash of any significance to uh, deal with. Uh, the rubber band tracks went together brilliantly. I mean, they just, it was, it was actually the only three issues that I have with the whole thing uh, are uh, as follows. Um, the dozer blade. The instructions have you installing the support brackets or support arms for the dozer blade on uh, like step three I think. But if you want to display the dozer blade in a down position, which they don't tell you you can do until like step 25, and you've already glued these two arms in place, you, you can't. It just, you have to rip it all apart to get them off. Now, I chose to have mine up. My, when I decided to build it, I was going to build it in the up position, so that really wasn't too big an issue for me. Uh, what? while I'm on the subject of the uh, arms the little pieces of plastic that this is supposed to line up on right here was too short I had to add plastic on both of them to bring it up a little higher because uh, when you laid the part in place you could see that the ends have appear to have a bolt molded through it or a pin molded through it but the pet plastic that you wanted to hook it to was so low that you could see there was no pin running through it and it just looked strange and I would assume that they would have had it high enough to have a hole there to drop the pin through to secure it in place. So I, I added plastic there and there. Oh, and uh, I added uh, some bolt detail, uh, nut and bolt detail, on both the hinge points of the dozer blade itself uh, from a Ming kit. Uh, nuts and bolts set that I purchased a while back on one side it's uh, nut detail with the uh, bolt sticking through and on the other side it's the bolt heads and they come in real handy for all kinds of upgrades uh, second issue on the front it was really warped through here so I had to glue it in two days basically um, clamp the crap out of it in order to get it to sit down and then I could glue the back in place and it settled down uh, it was just the top the, the rest of the hull, the lower part of the hull, when it glued in place, pulled everything nice and straight, so it really, uh, really uh, wasn't too big a problem. It was a little annoying sitting on a workbench and watching it rock back and forth. Uh, the exhaust. Also in one of the earlier steps, it tells you to cut this piece off right here, and I did. And it had you assemble the long exhaust pipe again on like step 25 it says well there's an option you don't have to cut that off you can have that or the long pipe so luckily I saved this piece and I just glued it back into place because I like the look of the uh, the pipe there coming off and you can see I, I used my airbrush and some uh, soot black paint to you know replicate the, the ex engine exhaust as it would blow out uh, even a little shadow where the uh, guard for the uh, rear light would have caught it. Uh, all the blue spots for the vision ports uh, are all mylar. It uh, gives a nice reflective quality that I can't replicate with any kind of paint. I've, and I've tried. I've tried the Tamiya and different s options and I just can't get the same kind of 
nice quality reflectiveness of the uh, and color depth of the uh, blue mylar. Uh, let's see what else did I do. Oh, I found a photograph showing that the this air intake, I'm assuming it's an air intake, had a grate on it, so I had some extra PE scrap that I put that on. Uh, highlighted the edges with uh, my soft artist pencil to get kind of a worn steel look on it. Uh, oh, the axes. The axes look like misshapen golf clubs. And uh, I was going to replace them, as I noted in the uh, slideshow, but <laughs> but I'm afraid I didn't have any extras. So what I did was uh, took some scrap PE and built the front mounting bracket for it, which kind of elongates it a little bit and gives it a nicer shape to it. Had to do fill and drill in the uh, or redrill the holes on the rear smoke launchers because, like in the, uh, the slideshow, you'll see that it's. Uh, well not pretty it was they were t too small and way off center nothing i could do about them so it was just another easy fix uh to put them in place oh decals yeah one last thing about the decals um uh, here on the side this little decal is supposed to have one matching on the other side but it's completely covered by the uh poles so it didn't get put on uh in minimal decals the ones that they did have went on nice and smooth the vehicle numbers front and rear i mean both on the rear and on the front uh had uh, a number of these little rectangles red rectangles which are i'm assuming are reflectors two there two up front uh, funny side note if you watch if you read the instructions that I've noted in the slideshow uh, this is pointed uh, the, the line pointed to this for the decal says six on it well six actually is the small decal that goes here that says telephone but it also in the instructions show you putting it here so it has number six listed twice um, overall I like it I built it as a kid, not this particular kit manufacturer. I, I think it was probably, uh, oh, I don't know, Monogram or one of those other, you know, kit manufacturers in the 70s, late 60s, early 70s, I guess. The uh, and I remember having it on a, it came with a plastic base, Aurora, it might have been an Aurora kit had its own little diagram di diorama base for it and uh, I always thought it was such a cool looking tank and uh, I just when I found it trumpeter had it and it just brought back a bunch of neat memories and it's like I gotta rebuild it revisit it I know I can do a better job than I did back then at least I hope it's better uh, overall when I recommend a kit yeah sure actually it's not too bad uh, you have to uh, pay a little attention to it. Uh, like I said, if you want the dozer blades down, you can't install the brackets like they want you to in the beginning. You have to hold off and mount them in the back. The uh, exhaust, again, also, you have the option for the short or the long. And uh, I guess primarily with the long one, it's just I couldn't get it to line up well. It's a corrugated tube, and it just... I just couldn't get the line up worth a darn and no matter how I tried to file it and carve it and sand it just looked like crap anyway so I was kind of glad I really didn't want it anyway um I guess that's about it thanks for watching